Michael was referring to, just on the key point of retention. This is something that we have learned ourselves we've evolved our business model. And Tourism Ireland do a great job, but it, with as we're looking down three years of Brexit, they do need to evolve the approach because we are very dependent on the UK. One in three tourists who come to Ireland ever come back again. Uh, and about one in four Americans who ever come to Ireland ever come back again. If you contrast that with Scotland, uh, over half of the people who go and visit Scotland as a tourist go back to Scotland a second time. And if we, as we do, as we give questions to our consumers, you know, why did you come to Ireland? What did you like? Will you come back again? Uh, Scotland is the number one competitor. You know, you get the lakes, you get fishing, you get a kind of a Celtic tradition, you get the coast. But people say it's a lot cheaper. So Scotland and tourists, tourists picking Scotland over Ireland, I would highlight as the competition. But go after the European market. The euro is what they're paying in. There isn't going to be the uncertainty that the, the British tourists will have with sterling and the Americans may have with the dollar. And also bear in mind, two thirds of the British people who come here are Murphys and O'Briens coming back to visit family. So we can sometimes delude ourselves that these are tourists coming because they love Ireland. I lived in Manchester myself for years, I was counting those tourist numbers, but that is Irish people coming back. So Irish tourism can grow, it can flourish, it can go from 8 million a year to 12 million a year, but let's go after the Germans, the Spanish, the Italians, the Nordics. Let's go after Europeans because we have a great product, all right, and let's push that great product at the Europeans. And that's where we come in because we connect 98 European airports into, uh, into Dublin. Okay, uh, I wanted to briefly just give you an update on um, the Amazon of travel. Um, and I think we're now three years into an ex exciting digital transformation. Over the summer of last year, we reached a big milestone where we became the world's number one most searched airline. That's about 550 million visits to Ryanair.com every single year. That's bigger than any other airline in Europe. That's bigger than any other airline in the world. And that's a testament to the great demand there is for our low fares and more and more of the other products that we're selling in addition to, the, in addition to seats. 93% of those visits come direct to Ryanair.com and that is something that we are precious about. We don't like customers paying more than they should. We don't like customers being duped by websites pretending to be Ryanair and hence that's why we're taking some cases against screen scrapers who try to look like Ryanair and you end up paying hidden fees which is something we don't like. Um, we now have 18 million people using our app. Three years ago we didn't have an app, now we have Europe's most used uh, airline app. The app over Christmas was a great success as customers use it to board. Uh, air, board our flights more than they ever have done before and we now have a five star rating in both the iOS store and the Android store um, which is something that's very important. January 17 app bookings were 15% were of our overall bookings. So the trend to mobile as people are not booking their travel, booking other products have sat in front of a desktop machine, more and more we see customers doing it on the mobile device in their hand and that's something that we've embraced. We've caught up in year one and I think over the past two years we've really gotten much, much further ahead of the competition. Things like priority boarding, things like fast track at the airport, things like last minute purchase of car parking, all of these are products that are surging ahead in terms of the demand that we see because simply, simply customers want to buy it on the day of travel and they're able to do that uh, on their mobile device. Um, we've launched My Ryanair uh, as an account function, similar to the account function that you'd have on Amazon.com. Uh, and this is principally just so that we can identify and make it simple for customers to make bookings. You will enter who you are, your passport details, your payment details, you can add family members, kids, etc., etc. We learn more about you and then we're able to target specific information, specific offers and suggest routes to those customers. We now have 17 million members of My Ryanair and we get to over 25 million members by the end of this calendar year. That 25 million members of My Ryanair, that would exceed, we'll say, the Tesco club card membership of the UK, Ireland and all of Central Europe. So that will become a great data asset for us as we know our customers better. It also eliminates uh, a lot of what the screen scrapers do because you will have a Ryanair account. You will need to be signed into that My Ryanair account if you want to book a flight with us. So that gives customers the security that they are on the genuine Ryanair website, paying the genuine lowest fares and not suffering hidden fees as they would. You've seen us launch Ryanair Rooms uh, and we're adding more suppliers to that and there's a new exciting version of the Ryanair Rooms website that will launch before the end of March and Ryanair Labs continues to build out a number of, uh, of new 
uh, of new ancillary products. And that's really, I think, just taking us from where we were behind. I think three years ago, we didn't have a website that worked in many of the key markets. We didn't have a website that did a great job of capturing customer information and getting you to buy ancillary products. We've raised our guidance that ancillary revenue will become 30% of our overall revenue, and that Business Plus and Leisure Plus, the Business Plus and Leisure Plus, the two new fair products that we've launched, will also continue to be a bigger part of our sales. I think we've made incredible progress. There isn't another airline that we look at and say, from a digital point of view, we like what they're doing. Uh, the competition in our minds is businesses like ASOS, businesses like Amazon, and that will continue to be the case uh, in the in the coming year. You know, we've got the traffic, we've got the best website, we've got the best app, and now it's about getting more of the share of wallet and getting our existing customer base to buy more travel products from us. Um, and I'll quickly tell you that in Cork, the number of the traffic will broadly be flat at 860,000. In Shannon, there is a margin decline to 0.725 million customers. In Knock, we carry 570,000. And in Kerry, we carry 270,000. So in total in Ireland, it's 4.5 million uh, passengers, 14.4 no, 14, 14. 14. 14. in 2017, that's down 3% uh, on last year. Uh, as Michael said, look, it's a great time for consumers. Fares have, fares have never been better. That's across the market in Europe. One particular message, uh, as well as launching winter 2017, which allows you to book our flights all the way through to March 2018, uh, to Irish families who want to get away to the sun in the peak summer period, because of the situation in Turkey, because of the situation in certain countries, Demand across Europe to go to Spain and Portugal in the months of June, July and August is huge. So anyone who wants that classic one week or two week Irish holiday in the sunshine, if you haven't booked it yet, do book very, very quickly because Spanish hotels are already reporting that they are full. Uh, Spanish tourism is gonna go from 68 to 75 million without having done anything different. It's just because of the situation in Turkey. So you've got about 50 million British and German tourists alone who usually go to Turkey that are now looking for the sunshine in those three months. So that's going to end up in the Algarve, that's going to end up in Andalusia. So there is a, if you want the sunshine in the summer, book very quickly because you will get a, you will get a cheap flight, you just won't get a, a hotel room. Um, we will continue to roll out new bases. We're very excited that in the next couple of weeks we will start operating flights to Frankfurt and Maine. Michael's touched on our growth in Germany. Berlin has been our fastest growing base this past year. We now have nine aircraft based in Berlin and growth in Germany will continue. It's a very exciting market. We've touched on Brexit. We've touched on the need for Dublin Airport, but also Ireland to really say don't become uncompetitive, whether it's the cost of the airports, whether it's the cost of hotels, restaurant, Ireland really needs to maintain its competitiveness as we look at three years of uncertainty driven by Brexit. Uh, we don't think there's anything that's happening in Pennsylvania Avenue is going to impact the Irish economy yet, but there are you know, rumours that, that it could. So I think we need to hunker down and really drive Irish tourism and focus on getting you know, double the number of Europeans that are coming here. And that's what we can do 